All right, before you rescued Chip Ganassi's <laughs> life and career, you were a Formula Ford racer and also yeah, a man that went to the SCCA runoffs several times, yeah. taking care of guys' cars, which probably made you crazy because you were a pretty good driver, but just talk about some of the memories of going to the runoffs. Well, I was really fortunate to be around a guy named David Bruns to start with in Formula Ford racing or as my career went along and uh, invaluable uh, what he helped me do. Uh, so he, he, I looked after him, uh, Bob Lobenberg, Mike Mokler, and a guy named Alan Turner. And Alan Turner to me was this guy that uh, was in his mid to late 40s that was racing against kids that were tw in their 20s, and he was beating them like a drum. And uh, he asked me to look after his car while I was still racing, and I agreed to do that. And we went to the runoffs. He qualified from uh, Cal Club in Southern California. We go to the runoffs. He qualifies second. And he and Loring were on the front row, Dave Loring who was a terrific guy, and he was in Dan Gurney's Eagle. And uh, so the race goes on, and Alan led some, David uh, led some. They came by on the last lap. Uh, Alan was in front. When they came by for the flag, Alan was in second. So after the race, he said to me, Mike, he said, you do a terrific job with the car. The car was capable of winning the race, but I wasn't going to do what David did at the end to win. I said, okay, Alan. He said, now what I want to do is when we go home, I want you to get the car absolutely perfect. I want to sell the car. I'm going to buy an Atlantic car, and I'm going to go with Atlantic racing. Okay. So I'm taking the car apart, and that eagle was that aqua blue color. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. So there was aqua blue paint on the bottom of the transmission and all the way up to the uh, space frame where the transmission kind of fell into the, the back of a Crosley. It was 32F Crosley. So Loring put uh, Allen up in the air before the bridge, fully up in the air. I got a picture later. <laughs> Allen came down on all fours and finished second. And, uh, and I saw Turner, or I saw Loring's nose <laughs> after the race and had a big hole in it, and that's where it came from, and that's what Alan was talking about. But Formula Ford racing was so much fun in those days, and uh, being able to race on a, on a national scale then kind of uh, showed the guys, Southern California guys, were pretty good at what they did, and uh, I mean, we had a great was, time. We were talking to Bob, Bobby Rahal yesterday. It was really a big deal, the runoffs. Oh, it was huge, and those guys, like Rahal is an example, Price Cobb, um, a lot of the other guys that raced in the Atlantic Series also raced all the SCC Nationals. And then they, they all turned up, and uh, I remember there was one year, there was Ray Hall, Kogan, and Price Cobb racing against each other for a, a cup, for a trophy. And, uh, yeah, it was a competitive place. I think Chip was the 81 Formula Ford champ? From the Northeast, yeah. And, in fact, that's I first met Chip because I was looking after a guy uh, in Atlantic racing who wanted to race all the SCC Nationals and uh, race all the pro races in 1980, and his name was Whitney Gans. And uh, we did 40 races in one year between SECA regionals, nationals, and the, and the North American series. And we were at a Lime Rock SECA national uh, there in the gravel parking lot right next to a guy named Chip Ganassi. And uh, he was racing Formula Fords with Joe Stamola, and uh, Joe said, I want you to meet this nice young guy. He's really, really a great racing driver. And I said, okay, fine, Joe. And it was Chip. Uh, and that's where I first met Chip. So you're still waiting to meet that nice young guy. Right? Uh, well, that nice young guy's just gotten older. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, he was, that was, even with Chip, I mean, he was rookie of the year at Indy. I mean, he had some talent. But it, the, the Formula Ford runoffs, I always just thought Formula Fords, Wiesenhoff and those, that was the most, it always seemed like that was the most competitive of all the SCCA runoffs. Oh my God, it was unbelievable, and uh, it was so much fun. And and in those days, you know, in the SC, in SCCA club racing, in Formula Ford racing, uh, it would be nothing to show up for an SCCA national, have 75, 80, 90 people uh, trying trying to beat each other up, and uh, uh, and that boiled over to 20 plus people that raced at the runoffs every year, and. Uh, Man, it was by inches. There's 1,700 entries at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, so I think everybody wants to get their picture taken somewhere around the track racing. But that's beyond my comprehension. I, I, it's beyond mine also, and I really do appreciate the SCCA finally bringing it to Indianapolis. Uh, and in fact, the Speedway doing that, because it'll be a great show there. That's a terrific road track. Uh, it's the kind of infrastructure that can make that thing uh, what, it, what it always has been. 
Um, and uh, I got an off weekend. I'm probably going to go out there. Yeah. Um, last question. Your critique of Paul Fanner may should probably be etched in stone somewhere. <laughs> We're thinking about making T-shirts. Could you share that with our audience? Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, uh, my re my relationship with Paul Fanner goes back uh, well before he he attempted to get his competition license. Uh, got him a pass for an SEC national at Riverside in 1972 with he and a friend of his. Uh, but he bought a Formula Ford, and uh, guys like me who are racing, we volunteered our time on the SCCA uh, licensing weekends. And so we were assigned to people like Paul, and I think I had about 10 Formula Ford guys that I was looking after on the weekend. And Paul was trying to figure out what to do, and he was getting there. And, uh, you know, you had an SCCA logbook at the time, and the instructor was supposed to fill that out, which I did. And I, and I can't remember exactly what I said, but it was something to the effect, uh, uh, needs some work in the corners, but has a terrific is terrific on the straightaways or something <laughs> like that, and you need to come back one more time. And I was at dinner, I don't know, three or four years ago with, with Paul. And he reaches in his pocket, and he pulls out this green... SCCA driver logbook, and he shows me this thing, and I think, oh my God, did I actually write that? Uh, <laughs> but uh, the, the friendship that we had that developed with the SCCA racing with Paul, for me personally, has been uh, uh, terrific. Yeah.